All right, today's lesson will be real quick on Newton's laws, just enough to get us started working a couple types of problems. Uh, Newton's first law, Newton's first law is just simply objects in motion tend to remain in motion. And objects at rest tend to remain at rest unless acted upon by an outside by a net force. I'm going to change it to that. It's my video. I can say definitions the way I want. Hmm. You can tell I teach chemistry. All right. Uh, this is sometimes known as the law of inertia. An object's ability to resist a change in motion. A fairly easy way of discussing Newton's first law would be to take a look at this example. Uh, in this case, we have a bowling ball and a golf ball. Uh, Newton's first law states both of these objects wish to stay at rest unless acted upon by an outside force or a net force. It doesn't take a genius to figure out here the results of what's going to happen. If I hit the bowling ball with the golf club, that's it. If I enact the same force upon the golf ball, obviously, uh, I was hoping it might roll back over here, obviously, vast contrast of results. The bowling ball resisted a change in motion much more than the golf ball did. All right. Now, we won't do too much with Newton's first law. All right. I think I've shaken that up. Newton's second law. Second law just says, well, basically... F equals M A. Force is directly proportional to mass and is directly proportional to acceleration, while mass and acceleration are inversely proportional to one another. That's really all this is stating. Therefore, if you have a greater force, that will increase, lead to a greater acceleration. On the other hand, you can look at your mass relationship a greater mass will yield a less acceleration, which is why in the event, a decent example if you look at the field of, uh, say, stock car racing, one of the goals in racing is to decrease the mass of the vehicle, therefore increasing the acceleration. Of course, you can also decrease the size of the engine, increasing the force and increasing acceleration. So. This is all the second law is pertaining to. And most of the problems I'm going to work are going to be using this equation, F equals MA. Third law just says for every action force, force there is an equal and opposite reaction force. Uh, best example I have in class of this, we'll often refer to what we call a normal force. So when we have an object sitting on the surface, that object will have a weight, and weight is mg acting down. 
A lot of times we'll say the surface then acts a reaction force known as a normal force back up against it. And the reason we use the word normal force for this reaction force is because it's at a 90 degree angle to the surface where something is sitting. So right now, for example, if I push down on the desk with a force of 20 newtons, the desk isn't giving, so it must be pushing back with a reaction force of 20 newtons against me. All right. Now that we've went through that a little bit, let's go into what your first few problems are. Again, these problems are mainly going to just be using the equation F equals mass times acceleration. All right. First problem that we've got to work is a 5-gram bullet leaving the muzzle of a rifle with a speed of 320. What force, assume constant, since we're not using calculus, is exerted on the bullet while it's traveling down the 0.82 meter long barrel? So in this problem, example A, we've got a gun barrel. And that gun barrel is a length of 0.82 meters. This bullet has a final velocity of 320 meters per second. We will assume the bullet started at rest at the other end of the barrel. Already I want you to notice something. One, two, three numbers. So in the world of kinematics, we're already pretty well taken care of. This problem asks you to find the force exerted on the bullet. So if we want the force, it did give us the mass of the bullet. It said that the bullet is 5 grams, which would be 0 0.005 kilograms. So if we want this force, we need to have the acceleration. Well, we've got three bits of information. Third kinematic says V squared equals VO squared plus 2AX. So we can come in here and say 320 squared equals VO squared cancels out plus yields 2 times A times 0.82. So now we can plug that into the calculator. A little bit of glare. Uh, 320 squared divided by the product of 2 times 0.82 and we've got a whopping 62,439 meter per second square acceleration on that bullet. All right. Which is roughly 6,200 G's of acceleration. The force would then be equal to MA. Mass is 0, 0, 0,05. Acceleration 62,439. So times that by 0, 0, 0,05, we've got 312 newtons of force. The unit of force, the unit of force being newton, we haven't said that. And by the way, you need to also acknowledge as you work these problems what a newton is. A newton is a kilogram meter per second square. So a newton is a kilogram meter per second square. In terms of uh, dimensional analysis, that will come in handy later to make sure and know that. All right. So now we've done that one. Let's do example B and see what happens. At some point, we're going to go back to like the dog napping from uh, chapter unit three and use that to apply. Uh, here we've got a problem where we say air exerts a forward force of 10 newtons on the propeller of an airplane. If the plane accelerates at two, what is the magnitude of the resistive force on the airplane? All right. One of the big parts of this unit is going to be what's known as sum of the forces. There's a reason why I taught you how to do vectors in unit three. It was really teaching you how to do these upcoming problems. We're going to start a bunch of these problems out just like this. The hard part of this chapter is going to be having to resolve the components of this, finding the resultants of the force. 
In this problem, it said, you have a forward force on this airplane of 10 newtons. Now, the problem is asking the resistive force. Well, if there's a forward force of 10, the resistive force, we'll say FR, force resistant, it's going to be in the opposite directions. So we've got two forces in opposing directions. Now, we're going to use a little bit of common sense here in this, but we're going to set this up. Remember how we did these sum of the x's in previous chapters? We're going to take this sum of the x concept and take it a step farther. Now I'm going to say sum of the forces in the x direction. And so the sum of the forces in the x direction, this problem is going to be this. 10 for the positive. Now subtract the negative force. And that's going to be equal to the mass and the acceleration in this problem. Now, there's also forces in the y direction, but we're neglecting those in this easier example right now. So this problem gave us a mass and acceleration. It just asked us to find this force. So this would be 10 minus the resistive force equals the mass of the airplane, which is 0.2 times the acceleration, which is 2. And so we're all set up for our answer in this problem. So we've got 0.2 times 2, which is 0.4. So we've got 10 minus FR equals 0.4. So we would end up with 9.6. It's equal to FR, and that would be 9.6 newtons had I included my unit in here. And that's how we get this resistive force. I want to do one more type of thing. I like to call this sailboat question. Now, the good thing is right now the problems y'all work. You can have a sum of the forces X and Y, but for the problems y'all first begin to work, and this pretty much holds true, for the most part, if you have forces in the X and Y direction like this, one of these two is going to probably end up being zero, but we'll get more to that later. I want to do what we know as a sailboat problem question, and then that's about going to be where this video runs out. A lot of times you'll work a problem with more than one force on it. So let's say in this case, and this is why you learn how to do the hiker in the woods questions in unit three how to do vector problems. Let's say we've got an object, we'll say a sailboat of mass 100 kilograms. It's more of a dinghy. And if I could quote one of my past students, what's a dinghy? But anyway, that's neither here nor there. And let's just say the sailboat is out in the water. And let's just say that there is a force blowing on the sailboat. Uh, let's say there's a 50 Newton force blowing at an angle of 30 degrees north of east. Let's just say that there's a current, a due south current of 20 newtons. This problem may then ask, what is the resultant acceleration? Well, if you remember from unit Three, you did problems finding resultants of hiker in the woods. You'd work a problem where somebody goes this way, then they go this way, and then they do this. And y'all would find the resultant of all those forces, or of all those little walks. This is the same problem. The only difference is where we went from here to here, here to here, here to here. All the forces are being applied at the same point. We do the problem the same. Find the resultant of this picture. Do a sum of the forces X and a sum of the forces Y. The only thing that's changed is this letter F. 
Look at the first vector. Look at the first vector. Its x component is positive, and it is a vector, so we'll use cosine for the x. So we've got 50 cosine 30. Now look at the second vector. It has no x component, so there is nothing else to add, so we'll just say equals. We're done. Now we'll do the y's. I like to look for my positive y's first. This one has a positive y value, 50 sine 30. And now look at the 20. It's in a negative direction. There's no angle, so no sines or cosines. I wonder how fast I can flip that. There's no sines or cosines involved, so we'll just write minus 20 equals. Now we'll plug this in our calculator. 50 cosine 30 is 43.3. Newtons. 50 sine of 30 would be 25 minus 20, so this is 5. Now, just like in those previous problems you did, hiker in the woods, again, if you're unfamiliar with this, go back to Unit 3 and watch the videos on doing vectors. I think there's three of them. And here's what we've learned. We've got an x value of... 43.3 and a y value of 5. Find this resultant. Pythagorean says that r squared is equal to 43.3 squared plus 5 squared. So 43.3 squared plus 25 square root of that answer is 43.6. So there is my resultant force. So now if I want to find the resultant acceleration, all I got to do is set that equal to MA. 43.6 is equal to 100A. So my answer comes out to 0.436 meters per second square. And again, this is what I kind of commonly call a sailboat question in this case. All right, so if y'all got this, that's your introduction to Unit 4.1.